Hello everybody, this is Omega, owner of Gizmo Servers. Just wanted to inform you guys of the 1.7 release of Minecraft, as you may already know. Um, and also, thank you for checking out this video. Gizmo Servers is here to serve you, the Minecraft community. So please stop on by. Uh, we have great promotional codes running right now. Save 30% uh, on your recurring bill with the promo code in the description so if you want a hosted server from affordable prices come check out gizmoservers.com bye hello youtube omega here today i'm going to be doing a minecraft 1.7 spigot slash bucket setup tutorial if you can please give the video a thumbs up that would be awesome and uh... so now let's get started. The first thing you need to do is look in the description of the video and click on the spigot download link that you'll see there and it'll take you to a page that looks like this. First thing you're going to want to do is just click on this right here up at the top and just keep following the folders. So click that, the top one, click that target. And then lastly you're going to want to just click the spigot jar it'll save to your computer and then once you save it create a new folder on your desktop name it whatever you want and place that jar file into your uh, into your new folder that you just created so you should see the spigot jar file you won't see the start bat file we're gonna make that right now and this is how you do it you just right click inside the folder go to new and then scroll down to text documents edit the text documents with notepad or notepad plus plus your choice and then you're gonna wanna paste in the code that you'll see in the description like so so paste that code in right there and then you click on file up at the top and you click on save and then what you're gonna wanna do is where it says save as type make sure it's set to all types otherwise it won't work and then save call it run dot bat you don't have to call it run you can call it whatever you want but uh... just make sure you add the dot bat at the end otherwise it will not work so we're gonna go ahead and save that alright and now you see we got the run bat file we can go ahead and delete the new text document so we can use the run bat file. I have the start bat file because that was already there. I just was showing you guys how to make the these these two files. They do the same thing. So either one I can click. So we'll just click on it. This is the unsupported version of 1.7. Once the stable build releases, I'll make sure I update all the links with the newest version. Um, so while it's doing its thing. Uh, when I say thing, it's generating all the files like you see right here. It's going to throw out some errors, but that's completely normal. What you're going to need to do now is go to your um, start menu and type in CMD if you're on Windows 7 Vista or 8, I believe, and it'll bring up a black prompt box. If you're not on any of those operating systems if you're on Windows XP you have to go to start and then go to run and then type in CMD into the run, run prompt it'll bring up the same thing and then you're just gonna wanna type in IP config once you have that typed out press enter it's gonna show you a bunch of numbers what you're gonna wanna do is write down the IP v4 and the default gateway and make sure it's for the connection that you're using so if you're on an ethernet connection make sure you you're using the numbers below the ethernet if you're on a wireless make sure you're using those numbers so once you have that information you could go ahead and close out of that then you're gonna wanna open your web browser again and you're gonna want to open up a new tab and type in your default gateway into the web browser and when you're logged into the default gateway uh, you'll see an area for the password um, some routers the default for username is admin um, and the 
default password for password is password. It depends on your router and if your parents or administrator change the settings. You'll have to find that out for yourselves. Um, now, when you're logged into your router, you're going to have to look for something along the lines of port forwarding, port triggering, or virtual servers, or it might even be under advanced like mine is. So once you get to the port forwarding section, what you're going to want to do is add a service of some sort. So make sure you add the service. I already have one created here. And you're going to want to plug in all the information here. So you're going to want to port forward both, both TCP and UDP. And then put in your, your um, IPv4 address. And then put your start port 25565, end port 25565, save changes, and you may or may not have to restart your router, depending on the router mo um, model and brand. And then once you do that, we can go ahead and look at this console for the server. Looks like all the files were generated correctly here. And now what we need to do is go into the OP... <clears throat> excuse me click on the OP text file and put your username into this file here and save changes and then what we're gonna wanna do is just stop the server really fast okay and now what we can do is we can edit the server properties with notepad plus plus all the programs that you'll need will be in the description of the server. Just look in the description. Um, and then you can go ahead and change any of the server settings as you please here. And then once you're done changing them, you can save changes and exit out of that like so. And then what you're going to want to do after that is restart your server. Let it do its thing. And then you're going to want to go to... Google and type in what's my IP and then you're gonna wanna click on the first link and then the f you'll see some numbers with a bunch of periods in between it um, that is the number you're gonna wanna give to your friends and other people to join your server and remember that number because that's how people are gonna connect to it since we port forwarded and to connect to your own server instead of actually type in, typing in the IP what you need to do if you're running on the same computer as the server if you're playing on the same computer as the server what you're gonna wanna do is this log into Minecraft with 1.7 as you can see 1.7 right there and then connect to your server with the local host and there we go we are in a spigot 1.7.2 server um, and yeah I hope this has helped you guys uh, make sure to thumbs up uh, comment and if you guys need any help um, just leave a comment or message me I'll try to help you the best I can and uh, thanks for watching and enjoy goodbye <laughs>